Hey guys, it's Levi Gates and welcome back to Detox. I've got Ivan LaCroix from Optimum Polymer Technologies. Glad Thank you, my here. friend. Yeah. Uh, so this one we're going to talk about the evolution of polishing and yeah. how it's come a long ways. I started out back in the day learning how to use a random orbital buffer yeah. to uh, wax cars at a car wash. Right. Um, it was good a, old gem. Yep. Yep. Then 16 I, or 20 pound? I was a 16 pound. It wasn't okay. a 20. I've, I heard horror stories of the guys trying to run the 20s. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did that at the car wash and we did hand waxes for 20 bucks or whatever. And, right. Um, customers would come in and we had 20 minutes to get it in and out. And yeah. That's how we did it. Uh, we'd throw the bonnet on. And, um, I remember people asking a guy that was the detailer ahead of me, can you buff this out? Can you get this out? And he was like, yeah, I probably could. And he would use the random orbitable buffer to try and polish. Yeah. And I laughed when I saw in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, there's a scene where a kid is polishing the paint on the Mustang. Yeah. And he's using one of those yeah. to buff out and half the fender's oxidized and the other half's like perfect show quality paint. Yeah. And I laughed when I saw that because it instantly brought me back to when I was 16 and I was watching this guy who was 24 and yeah. Trying to buff out a scratch, and it just it didn't go anywhere. No, okay. uh, got a but, little shinier, but yeah, yeah. But I remember watching that uh, as a kid and learning about that, and yeah. going like, I wonder what the next step is. And then I got a rotary, yeah. and started my process of rotary up until about four years ago, yeah. when I got into the DAs and started using the the uh, Porter cable and the Rupas and the Zen tool and all that. Right. So. Um, it's made it a lot easier with the advance of the DA yes. uh, to get great correction, but at the same time, I feel there's a lot of guys that don't have the mastery of the rotary or are no. scared of the rotary. Yeah, scared is the better term. There's a whole generation of detailers that have never used a rotary. They're afraid of it. They've read online somewhere that it's some big dangerous tool that's going to burn paint. Swirls cars and yeah. burns paint. Swirls paint, and it isn't, trust us it's an easy tool to master. It just takes a bit of time. And the horror stories come from people misusing the rotary. Right. To do a play on the NRA thing, a rotary doesn't kill paint. It's the person per, using yeah, the rotary. Person using it. So the rotary is a formidable tool. I actually prefer to use the rotary for finishing. Mm. But if I'm doing a quick one step on a car, yes, the DA is the way to go Yeah. Uh, for me. But that's a personal choice. I like the rotary because there's no vibration yeah. It's easy to control. It's I use a flex rotary. It's and the lightweight. new flexes are really light. Yeah. You can it's lightweight, it's comfortable, uh, less noise, no vibration. You know, some people characterize some paints as sticky. Yeah. Well those paints always finish better with a rotary. Makes sense. Yeah. You don't get the micro marring that you can with the DA, right. etc. And then DAs, there's short stroke, there's medium, there's long stroke. Yeah. There's a whole myriad, there's a whole selection of them. And it's good to have all of them. Yep. Uh, they all have their place. They all have their reason. So those are the tools for polish. Well, and, and one thing that I like with like, say like the new Rupa's hybrid yeah. is that it has the option to make it rotary or DA. Right. Um, so that way you can have that small tool and still be able to rotary a spot that you weren't able to previously, right. or if you had a small DA, you, you're able to switch it yeah. and tackle that and get that correction exactly. out of there. And For heavy correction, correction yep. you know, it can be done with the DA. And yep. there's people that correct paint with a short stroke DA, like a porter cable. Yep. Sure, it can it's be done. It's a long it, process. Yeah, it's a long and hours. slow. Uh, a rotary is just faster yep. and actually less aggressive. True. You know, people think rotary will burn paint. Well, it used to be that we'd use the rotary at 1600 or 2000 or 2500 RPM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd burn paint that way. Yeah. And wool pads, people are afraid of the wool pad. Well, the wool pad actually runs cooler than a foam pad. Yep, and it does. You have a lot of air movement. And after the, the talking portion discussion. of the video, uh, I have Stay a tuned. Yeah, I have a thermal imaging camera, and Dane will be editing in some images of that to show differences between pressure, speed, and pad types. Mm -hmm. So just a little something to look forward to yeah. in a couple if minutes. you've never seen it, it's pretty wild stuff. Yeah, I use the thermal imaging camera as a teaching tool mm -hmm. when I'm teaching people how to polish, just to show them the difference that heat makes. Back in the 60s, lacquer-based paints, heat was actually a good thing. Yeah. We've unfortunately carried that mentality through to the new base coat, clear coat systems. 
Heat is very damaging to these paints. They have a heat limit of about 140 to 160 degrees. They shouldn't go over that. Now you'll say, black car out in the sun is gonna get hotter than that. Yes, it does. But, but the whole car gets that temperature and there isn't something applying a rotational or vibration force to it trying to rip the paint off the car. Yeah. It's just sitting there. So the paint can take it at that temperature, mm -hmm. but not in the aspect where we're polishing because it heats up quickly, cools down quickly as well. Yeah, it expands and contracts. Yeah, and heat does a lot of negative things to paint. First of all, it swells the paint. Mm -hmm. So when you're swelling the paint, the scratches that are there look like they're going away. And unfortunately, some compounds contain some odd solvents. A lot of companies say their compound is water-based. Yes, water-based just means that it has more water than anything else. So if it has 50% water, 5% abrasives, and 45% oil, guess what? It's water-based legally. Right. So water-based is more a marketing term than anything else. Mm -hmm. They all have oils, but some of them have solvents. And those solvents actually act like Botox. They kind of swell the paint up a little more, more well, or plump it up a little bit. Yeah, paint is actually very porous. Mm -hmm. If you look at it through a microscope, it's not a, a hard surface. First of all, it's plastic. Yep. Base coat, clear coat. When it swells, those pores open up. If you're using a really heavy oil or water in your compound, that's not gonna get in there. But a lot of compounds or polishes have solvent in them. That solvent works its way into the pores. Then as it cools back down, the paint wants to go back, but it can't go back because now those pores are filled with that solvent. Right, okay. Some solvents evaporate away quickly, an hour or two. Right. Some will take days, some will take weeks, some might take up to six months. We've all seen the car, the guy's finished, looks beautiful. Two or three weeks later, it's all full of buffer trails. Yep, yep. And a lot of people have the reaction of saying, well, he used a glaze. No, he may not have used a glaze. He just heated the paint so much that it swelled. It didn't shrink back down immediately because now it was swelled up with Botox. You know, it looked like some actress that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the lips are full or the <laughs> So <laughs> as those solvents work their way back out of the paint, those cracks open back up. Yeah. And now we see those little swirl marks. Creating heat is a negative aspect of polishing. Mm -hmm. It's a carryover from the way it used to be done. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the compounds on the market now and the optimum polishes, um, if you're using a rotary, we want to use it between 600 and 1,000 RPM. Right, really low speed. Yeah, because the less heat you create, the more it cuts. Think of an ice cube and a marshmallow. That's the best analogy I have. And a piece of sandpaper. If you take your ice cube and you rub the sandpaper over it, it's going to cut the ice cube. Right. Take a marshmallow, run the sandpaper over it. It gets gooey. It just gets gooey. That's what's happening with your paint. Right. And a lot of people, I've seen, read this online, that they're reflowing the paint. Yep. Right. That, that was a common term I heard too, kind of growing up through it, is yeah. that's, that's, well, you got to get it hot enough, you got to get it to reflow and pull it over those scratches. Yeah. That's what they would say. Right. And I was like, that doesn't work. You can't, we're rounding edges. We're not pulling clear no. to bring it down. Exactly. And another thing, when you're polishing paint, we don't necessarily want to remove those scratches down 100%, because mm -hmm. that's not necessarily what the customer needs. It might be what the customer wants or what the customer thinks they want. Right. But let's say your paint is five microns thick. Your clear coat is three of those five microns. You have a scratch that's two and a half microns deep. Well, if you get rid of that scratch, Run guess left. what? You've got half a micron of clear coat left on top of your base coat. That's not a lot of clear coat left. Right. Not much UV protection. That's future paint failure. Mm -hmm. So it, are you doing your customer a service by getting rid of that scratch when you could have just rounded over the edges yep. and made it almost disappear? So little things you have to consider. But when polishing, we want to keep the temperature down as low as possible. Using a rotary, uh, people mm -hmm. are afraid of finishing with a rotary. I finish rotary with a waffle pad and I don't have swirl marks. Mm -hmm. uh, when I teach new employees how to polish, we start with a rotary and then they move into a DA later. Yeah. But once they've mastered the rotary, then the DA is easy. Yeah. But if you start someone sense. with a DA... They get a little lazy, yeah. or they get happy with it. In right. a sense, and they're like, oh, I can do it, and I don't need a rotary, or right. they don't uh, know kind of the full potential of the tool, right. so to speak. So if you don't have a rotary, you can go to a pawn shop and pick up a good used rotary. Yeah, good Makita or DeWalt. Yeah. Uh, will do just fine. Yeah. Uh, if you have budget, there's a Fest Tools, Flexes, there's nice, yep. nice rotaries out there. And the Makita is a good tool, and the DeWalt's a good tool as well. 
It's just I'm lazy. I don't like that heavy of a tool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking to get to a smaller flex and yeah, exactly. You know, take the weight off. Uh, and there's you know Harbor Freight and mm -hmm. other imported tools like that. If you're just a hobbyist, they're great as well. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to last as well. They might be a little noisier and things like that. But practice with a rotary. Yeah. Learn to use a rotary. It's fun. You know, the, the rotary is enjoyable to use, and it's not this big bad monster that's going to rip paint off your car. Yeah. The easiest way to describe it is if you can try and sign up for a class, yeah, for any buffing class, just to get the basics down. Have someone help you. I had to learn from guys that either knew more about it than I did or um, kind of had to go about it on my own and just play with the buffer. Yeah. Um, it took me years to get to a spot where I felt comfortable um, polishing cars and I've trained a lot of guys how to buff yeah. and some of the stuff I once I started learning more I was like oh I can't teach them that that's I've been teaching them wrong. But yeah. It was from an, an older detailer that had been doing it and that was the way that it was always done and he didn't care to learn any other way. Right. And when I'd learn a new way, I'd try and implement it and go, oh man, this is way easier. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, you came in and you've taught my crew yeah. how to do it as well and use, use the DA a different way and that was something that blew all of our minds. Mm -hmm. You know, we came in thinking, oh, with this board doing it, just fine. And we have good correction and good looking cars coming out. Ivan came in, showed us some little tips and tricks and ways to do it. We did a thermal imaging camera, and it, it's amazing the difference in pressure. And yeah. uh, you don't realize how much heat you can create by doing something as menial as putting your hand on top of the machine when you're right. polishing. Uh, you know, whether it be a rotary or a DA, yeah. I'm a three finger polisher, mm -hmm. two on the back end and one on the front. And people look at me like I'm strange, but that's how I like to use the machine. Yeah. Sometimes I'll, I'll use four fingers two in the front, two in the back. Uh, <laughs> but I'm very delicate with the tool. Yeah. I let the tool do the work. I don't manhandle the tool. Yeah. I let it, you know, it dances over the paint. Mm -hmm. And once you get to that point, it's a lot easier on your body as well. Yeah. You know, you're not <laughs> holding on with a death grip trying well, to manhandle yeah. this tool. Well, it, it, you got to be safe with it too. I've yeah. had guys that uh, are buffing, not paying attention, hit the white, the. Uh, antenna and that Bing. antenna slaps them across the cheek a couple times and yeah. they either fall down on the floor or, or get surprised or if yeah. guys catch their jackets or t-shirts caught in the rotary because they're not paying attention to right. what they're doing headphones yeah. get taken like that we've all experienced that yeah here um but I, I remember watching one guy that was buffing and he literally got his t-shirt caught and it ripped the yeah. shirt off of him yeah um other guys wear they're buffing a car and standing on top of a tire on a big lifted truck and yeah. they hit the antenna and it smacked them and they <laughs> fell on the ground. I myself have gotten hit square in the head yeah. with the handle of a rotary, got it caught on a, on a uh, roof rack and yeah. just jumped and smacked Oh yeah, smacked definitely. You know, when, I'm, when I'm working around an intricate area, yes, I will yeah. hold on to it a little tighter. But it is just being careful and not being distracted right. when working with it, Yeah, watching well, the paint. Your, your body position as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people that when they're working with a, whether it be a rotary or DA or any polisher, they're like the hunchback in Notre Dame because they think the polisher has to be up and down at all times or yeah. left or right at all times. Well, you can move it around. Whatever's comfortable It for doesn't you. matter what position it's at. As long as, you know, try to keep your back straight, your shoulders square. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we see people that they're bent over and they're, you know, I think they're trying to smell the paint coming off the, the pad. They're so close. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of us that do that. I'm guilty of it. I, yeah. I get lost looking into the paint and yeah. all of a sudden, I, you know, if I'm not careful, I'll fall into it. Yeah. Uh, so. so I do have to watch that on myself and some of my other guys and we just yeah. always come by and try and stretch our backs and all right, we'll just, we're just going to hang out and let the machine do the work for yeah, a minute here. Exactly. You know, you hired the machine, let it work for you. Mm -hmm. so. So the thermal imaging camera video. Um, that will be at the end of this Yep, it's video. amazing. And it's seriously, if you haven't ever seen the amount of heat you create, just with a, uh, a, just bit with of pressure. a little bit of pressure, yeah. um, or the difference between a wool and a foam pad. A yeah. lot of guys, there is a lot of guys that think that if you hold up a wool pad and you hold up a foam pad, ask them which one's gonna cause the most heat, they instantly point to the wool. Yeah, and, and it's the other way around. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> a flat pad versus a waffle pad. Right. And speed, you know, on the rotary, I use the rotary at 600 RPM. Yeah. Bump it up to 1,000 RPM, big heat difference. Yeah. On a DA like the Zen tool, speed three and speed four, just one notch on the thing, 
or big difference in heat generation. Well, and I, I had a guy at a car show this week that did the same, that said that, and he said, oh yeah, I cranked my buffer up to six, six. Yeah. and polished it out, and then he went and bought a t-shirt to cover the quarter panel of his car because he heated up the clear coat so much yeah. that when the sun hit it, it had shrunk back down, yeah. and you could see every single wet sanding mark that he had left in it. You could see swirl marks up and down, yeah. buffer trails all over it, and he was like, yeah, I'll probably just have to bring it into you guys and have you guys fix it all for me. Yeah. But it was one of those where he is an amazing painter, Yeah. but he's not a, he's not a good finisher. No. And he was like, ah, I went at it 6,000 RPM with my rotary and my yeah. wool and just, and I got it looking sweet. Yeah. Um, it, it did not look sweet. No, exactly. <laughs> it was Looks very sweet scary. The second he got done. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, in the optimization training classes that I do, one of the things we do is we actually purposely burn an edge. Mm -hmm. And I'll have one student use the the polisher, no pressure, at speed three with his end tool, mm -hmm. and then the other student at speed six. The one using it at speed three goes through the paint faster than the one at speed six. It's good because they're removing paint. Well, again. This has always been fun, so make sure you stay tuned for the video at the end of this video. <laughs> yeah. And make sure that you comment right below. Let us know if you've got any little tips or things that you learned while polishing. And again, guys, this is just to help share knowledge that all of us have. Yeah. Whether you're a newbie starting out, just bought your first rotary, and you're gonna hit some paint with it, we'll have some fun with it, but most importantly, learn and ask questions because we all have had experiences with it. And we, that's all we're here to help. And we can all learn. It yeah. doesn't matter if you've been in the business two months, oh, 20 it, years, yep. or 30 years, we all have things to learn. Yep, and if you keep learning, the better you're gonna be at polishing your paint and making sure your cars are always looking good. So, Ivan, thanks for coming. Always a pleasure. Yep. And again, email me, Levi at theragcompany.com. Keep watching and subscribe right here, the Rag Company YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.